of this message, um, Hidden Treasure, and it's based on Matthew 13, verse 44. Just give me a few minutes and we will be ready to leave. Um, I, I don't know how many of you can remember what you were doing back in July 1969. Some of you know weren't even here, okay? You need to rest, you, some of you need to read the history books in order to understand what happened back in 1969. Um, but during that year, in fact, during that month, the summer of 69 was the month that Brian Adams got his very first six-string guitar. So for those around the music, you'll know uh, the song where he sings about his first six-string guitar. That's when he got it, summer of 1969. That was the month, that was the summer, that was the time when the Eagles were drinking a spirit that they weren't able to get in the 1970s and were able to write a song about that also. That was the month when Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were walking on the moon. And it was 10 years later, whenever the police sang about walking on the moon, but Neil and Buzz got to actually do it before they sung about it. That was the month whenever I sailed from Belfast to Dublin. You cycled from Ballaroni to Rathfrenna. I know there was a hill there, but we cycled from uh, Belfast to Dublin. Took us two days to get there, but we did it. We got to Belfast on cycle. Now, some people think that that's a made-up story. Some people think um, that I did that in the studio somewhere, but no, I was there. I did the cycle. It really did happen in July 1969. But I'm not sure if some of you um, know this. Some of you will, and some of you won't. But during July 1969, there was a gold rush at the bottom of the Shankill Road, July 1969. Um, and it was in a little street just off Peters Hill. And I can remember literally uh, people rushing out of Brown Square because they heard the news, there's gold in them there, Peter Hill. And uh, they heard the news of the gold being found on some site where some buildings had been knocked down. And so people were talking about it in Brown Square, as in other places, and they were literally running down the street in order to get to Peter's Hill and find themselves some gold. Some people did find gold. They found gold sovereigns, quite a lot of gold sovereigns. I don't know who became wealthy out of that, but people did find gold sovereigns at that particular time. So there was hidden gold in the lower shackle at that time. And what was striking about that situation was the word got out. And as soon as that word got out, people responded to it. They believed it and they responded to it. It began to spread like wildfire. Now, some people might well have chosen or might have wanted to have kept it quiet. Let's not tell anyone. People being selfish about it. Let's not share this with anyone. But some people couldn't be quiet. Hey, we're talking about the Shankill Road. Some people couldn't be quiet. Some people were so excited that they just wanted to tell others about what they had found. They couldn't stay silent. It's not what we do when we discover something of value. We either want to keep it for ourselves or we want to share it with others. And in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like hidden treasure. But it's a treasure that's no longer hidden. Because this treasure has now been revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And it's been revealed and should be revealed also to our communities and to our city through those who have discovered this treasure. So that we're not selfish about it, that we genuinely want to share it with others. People are looking for something in life. People are looking for value to life. People are looking for value in life. And the tragedy is that for a lot of people, sometimes they're living life day by day and what they're looking for is so, so close to them, but they don't know it. For years, people were living alongside those, those gold sovereigns, didn't know it was there. And people in this place and across our communities and across our city, I want to tell you today that what you're looking for is so very close to you. You just need to open your eyes and begin to genuinely Look for it. It's a treasure that's not based on earthly wealth and it's not based on the ability to find gold sovereigns somewhere. But it's found in one person who Peter describes in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4 where Peter refers to Jesus as the living stone rejected by humans 
but chosen by God and precious to him. Peter is saying, if you want to find value in life, if you want to find what's precious in life, then you need to turn your eyes upon Jesus. You need to look to him because in him and in him alone, there is life. There is life eternal, but there's also life abundant. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus says. But he says, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance. And in him, there is life. I want to say this as a close, this short message. That while God has enabled Kathleen and I, with the support of many others in this place, both past and present, someone at one time said to me, he said, Jackie, you're not doing all this by yourself. He thought he was telling me something I didn't know. Love this guy and still love him today and I know that he loves me. And I remember looking at him and I said to him, I know that I could never do this on my own. I know that I need people alongside me and around me. And Kathleen and I, we know that we have not achieved anything by ourselves. We thank God for his hand upon our lives, but we thank God for those who have been friends and supporters to us. As I say, past and present. And thank you for your support and for your love over these years. And so God has enabled us, with the help of others, to reach out across our city and beyond. But friends, regardless of stadium projects, city life projects, hobby horse playgroup, hobby horse family project, and all the other things that go on in this building and so on, we thank God for them all. Our ultimate goal has always been to present Jesus Christ and to present him as the most precious of all things and of all persons. Because without him, whatever we possess, whatever we pursue in life, without him, everything else amounts to nothing. That's why Jesus said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and yet lost his own soul? What would it profit a man if he really did become a millionaire? Brown Square One or some other kind of millionaire. What would it profit a man or a woman if, if they became a millionaire? What would, what would it profit if we really did find gold sovereigns that turned our lives around? What would it really profit if we found all those things and you did not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And our ultimate goal is to present Jesus, to, or is to present Jesus as the most precious of all things and of all persons, above the amassing of wealth, above what you think you could pursue and find in life, Jesus is standing so close to you. He's who you're looking for. He's what you're looking for.